Thank you. Let's take the next question. I think you've done an excellent job tonight of defending capitalism. Capitalism has treated you well. In general, it's treated the people in this audience well. And as you say, people respond to things based on their self-interest. So I think they've responded well to you. What I'd like to get to now is the question of the relationship between morality and economic policy, which you talked about before in terms of the quotes from Thoreau. You said that the worst sort of person is the person who's going to try to be charitable and is going no, to try to be... That well, you said that it's unwise said. for a person to be charitable or to be sincere. No, What no. did you say then? Let me, repeat, let me repeat Thoreau's words. Thoreau's words were, if I knew for certain that a man was coming to my... Uh, I think we heard Coming that. to my house with the conscious design of doing me good, I should run for my life. That's not the same thing as being charitable. Okay, fine. I'll accept that distinction. Take what Thoreau just said and you've echoed and apply it to American business. And I think what you're basically saying to is whom? American business, a corporation. To business men. You are the head of a corporation. Oh, you're applying you're it to me as the head of a corporation. Right. Can I ask you the question, please? Sure. Now, it seems to me that the implication is that that corporation should not try to do anyone else good because then the people would run away. What they should do is pursue their own self-interest. That right. means profit. And what I'd like to talk about is the implications of that in terms sure. of three concrete examples. Um, I believe that a couple of years ago when there was a major flood in Pennsylvania, you came out as opposed to aid for those disaster victims based on the rationale that they had bought the land at lower prices because the risk was known and they shouldn't be given any aid. I'd like people to consider the implications of that. Secondly, that isn't what I came out against. I came out against the government providing flood insurance, insurance at low cost in advance. I did not come out against private individuals giving charity to the people. Well, what who about were disaster the aid by the government? I what think. About government insurance of nuclear power plants. Well, it's the same thing. The nuclear power plants ought to be required to pay for full insurance themselves. And that ought to be incorporated in their charges. I'm not in favor of government subsidization of, of nuclear power plant insurance. Okay, a second. Look, don't attribute to me your conventional views of what, quote, a conservative believes, because I'm not a conservative. I'm a believer in freedom. Well, then I'd like to talk about that using an example, freedom. Um, in Ohio, an old man failed to pay his electric bill. You may be familiar with the case. And the electric company turned off the electricity and he died. The reason they turned it off was because it wouldn't have been profitable for them to keep it on because he didn't pay his bill. Do you believe that was right? I don't know the details of that case at all. But I can well believe But I'll be glad to... No, no, excuse me. In many of these cases you hear stories which when you find the details are very different from those that are presented. But let's suppose it were true, which is what I was going to go on to say. You know, why do you want to stop me? Why do you assume I'm always going to give the wrong answer? <laughs> let's, assume, uh, let's assume the facts uh, uh, were true. The result is tragic. Who is responsible? Is it really the responsibility? Should I blame the people? Let's suppose that the, for a moment, let's suppose that the electric company were to follow the practice of never turning off anybody's electricity. Let's just for a moment take that other extreme. Then this wouldn't have happened. Who would pay the cost? Are those would the only you, two be, alternatives? Well, for a moment, we can come to other alternatives, but I just want to show you the logic of the case. Because You're I want to show it to you. Absurdity. No, no, it's not an absurdity, because I want to show you that what you have to ask about are the costs imposed on different individuals. The electric company is meaningless. The electric company is a non human institution. The electric company, that what you must talk about, are either the stockholders of the electric company, the employees of the electric company, or the customers of the electric company. Those are the people involved. Now, if you go to the other extreme and adopt a policy that the electric company will always, will never turn anything off, then you effectively institute a system under which the only people who will pay for electricity will be those who pay for it voluntarily. Now, the number Mr. of people Friedman, who will do that... are those the only two alternatives? No, but I'm just showing you... Right. I want to go, you've gone to one extreme, I'm going to the other extreme and show you that where the responsibility really lies for the kind of thing you're describing. The responsibility really lies not on the electric company for turning it off, 
but on those of this man's neighbors and friends and associates who are not charitable enough to enable him as an individual to meet the electric bill. You're, you're, blaming, you're blaming the wrong person for what happened. Okay, well I think people understand that example.